So what we're going to be going over first is how to launch a new product on Amazon PPC or my launch strategy with Amazon PPC. And the key thing with Amazon PPC is keyword research. Keyword research is critical when it comes to Amazon PPC. Now the goal of Amazon keyword research is to find words that are searched for at a significant volume and that apply to your product. The key to this is finding words that aren't competitive, they're not too competitive, but at the same time they have the search volume to gain those initial sales. Personally, I like to go after those mid to long tail keywords, which has a much different meaning than it does on Google. On Amazon, those mid to long tail keywords, those are the ones that have significant search volume, but again, aren't that competitive. And so they're gonna have lower search volume than the, the big competitor or the big keywords, but they still have enough that they're going to create significance in your account. So most people are going after those super competitive search terms with the high amount of search volume. But if you go after the lower search volume search terms, you'll organically move up in the more competitive search terms. And so I'm gonna go over an example today, but just keep that in mind that you don't wanna go after those super competitive search terms right away. That's for a later strategy, but you wanna go after the ones that have a lower search volume, not as competitive, but as a result, you'll start ranking for those super competitive key search terms as a result of just following that. So the steps I'm gonna walk you through today, we're gonna to take your primary keyword and search for it. We're gonna create a negative list. We're gonna narrow down your keywords. We're gonna sort and categorize them, and then we're going to launch. So let me jump over to my screen, and I'm gonna share my screen and go over with a new product launch that we're doing right now for charcoal soap. So here we are inside Helium 10's Magnet. This is the keyword research tool that I use. Use whatever tool you want, just kind of follow the same steps if they have the same capabilities. So our main keyword is charcoal soap bar. So what I'm gonna do is just put that into here. And you should know your main keyword because you've done the product research and you kind of know what you're going after. So once we get that in, we're gonna let that search load. And at the same time, I'm gonna be opening up a Google Sheet. And so you can see my Google Sheet right here. And I, I just made a simple title or a simple column called negative list. So now that we've pulled up charcoal soap bar, you can see that it gets about 2000 search volume. And that what I'm looking at first is I'm gonna look at creating a negative keyword list. Now, I'm not concerned about creating a negative exact keyword list. I'm just gonna create a very small negative phrase match keyword list. And that, that comes into play because it helps us narrow down our keywords and then also gets rid of the terms that you don't wanna be going after. And so our charcoal soap bar is going to be for the face and body. And then charcoal soap also battles acne. So what we're gonna be looking for here is just some words in this word frequency list that we wanna get rid of. And so Bior is a competitor. I don't wanna go after them right away because the competition, people that search for Bior, it's gonna be very hard to go after them because they're so competitive and people are gonna buy them and it's gonna be hard to seal those sales. So I'm gonna put that as a negative right away. And the reason I use this word frequency list is because, because these are the words that are appearing all the time. And so you just wanna make sure that you have those in there. So our marketing is more towards women. So I'm gonna take out men and I'm gonna take out men's. There's men's right there. So let's go back to the keyword list. We're gonna do men, men's, man, man's, male, boy, girl, child. So as I scroll down this list, you can see a couple more. So goat and milk. So goat milk is another big thing in our category. And so we don't have either of those. We don't have goat milk. So I'm gonna go back to our negative list and we're gonna put in goat and milk. We don't have peppermint, so I'm gonna put peppermint in there. We're not a mask, so I'm gonna put that in there. So now we have a list of about 30 negative keywords and you can make this list as long as you want. The more research you go into this front end, it's gonna save you a little bit of money in the back end, but don't go too much into this. You don't wanna start eliminating words that could cause you sales. And so what I like to do is just consolidate this list by using Frankenstein by Helium 10. So I'm gonna take this list, I'm gonna copy it. So once we have Frankenstein pulled up, we're gonna copy and paste those words right here. And then I'm gonna pick add commas with space, remove duplicates and convert to lowercase. And then you can see that list right here of negative keywords. This is important because I'm gonna take this list back to magnet. So I'm gonna scroll down here and come down to advanced filters and I'm gonna click exclude and we're gonna put that whole list in there and hit apply. You can see we went from 4,400 to about 3,500 keywords. Now what I'm gonna do is actually go through the physical list itself to see if we can actually eliminate some of these as well. And so I'm gonna pull this off to the side, bring up my negative list right beside it, and then we're gonna to add to this. So we're not selling a hand soap, and you can see that's number one right here. 
So I'm going to add hand to this. Now, I don't like to make negative exact lists too much, but sometimes they do pay off. Because when you have a high search volume, like just soap, that's going to be a hard word to rank for. And so I don't really want to rank for just soap. So I'm going to make that a negative exact match. So when somebody types in soap, they're mostly just browsing around. Now our soap does have shea butter, but they're not, it isn't shea butter. And so what I'm going to do is put that in as a negative exact as well. And Dr. Squatch, that's another brand. So we're going to put that down here. And let me just go through this list now and type that in. So now we've added onto that list on the phrase size and the exact side. So what I'm going to do is copy this again, go through Frankenstein one more time. And we're going to go back to magnet, copying this over. And we're going to come up here and exclude any phrases that contain those words. So now we're going from 3,500 words to 2,973. So we're starting to narrow down that list. Now let's come up here to search volume. And so with search volume, you can click that you want 50 or more searches. And we're down to 1335, which is a pretty manageable list. But if you want to go even more, we could go even higher. So if we go to 100, that's 1,000 left. So that's, that's a pretty good amount um, to, to shift through. And so then what we're going to look at is IQ score. So IQ score is something that's just for Helium 10. And it just tells you the, the opportunity that that one has. And so you can actually put a number in there. You don't need to, but a low number is bad. A, high number is good. So you can play with this magnet IQ score. I'm just going to do 200. You can start at 50, 100, whatever you want. Just trying to narrow that down a little bit more. So now I'm down to 757. So now that we've kind of narrowed it down and got it down to about 757, what I'm going to do is just export this. So I'm going to take it out and bring it into a Google Sheet. So once we have our Google Sheet open, I come up here to File, go to Import, Upload, And we'll click on that that we just downloaded. I'm going to insert a new sheet. So after uploading it to the spreadsheet, we need to sort our keywords into different categories. These categories correspond with where the customer is in the buying cycle. When a customer searches on Amazon, they usually have some intent on their search. Are they just browsing for a solution to their problem, unsure of what they're going to purchase? This is a customer that is not necessarily ready to buy, but if the right solution pops up for them, they might buy. Or are they shopping for a particular product and know what they want to buy, but they're just unsure which one exactly to buy? Maybe they're ready to buy and know exactly what they want, or they might be searching for your competition. And so a browse keyword example in this list is acne treatment. Somebody's searching for something to treat their acne, but they don't know what they want to buy. An example of a shop keyword, meaning they're shopping around, is bar soap. They know exactly that they want a bar of soap. And then your competition is obviously self-explanatory. If you see a competitor keyword, then we'll organize it that. So, so now I need to categorize each of these keywords. I'm going to do blue for shop, red for browse, yellow for competition. Now that I've got these separated into shop and browse keywords, what I'm going to do is take probably the top 10 that I'm going to be going after. And so a browse keyword, again, is somebody just browsing around. So if you're a new product and you don't have a lot of reviews or you don't have anything enticing to get them to buy your product, I wouldn't go after browse keywords. Those are the ones that are in the, the red here. Now the shop keywords are people that have intent to buying what your product offers, but it's a matter of converting them then. And so I like to go after those shop keywords when I primarily launch my campaigns. And what you're going to notice here is that when I'm browsing through this, you're going to see a lot more browsing keywords than there are shopping keywords. So what I'm going to do now is take my shop keywords, put them into a new sheet so I can look at them separately from the browse keywords. And then I'm going to pick my top five to 10 keywords to go after. All right. So here we are. I've separated out my shop keywords into its own separate sheet. And you can see that I have 16 keywords here that we can go after. Now you can go after all 16 if you want, or you can go after just the first five to 10. And that's what I love about this magnet IQ score. The magnet IQ score just simply tells you the opportunity that's there. The higher the number, the better. The lower the number, the worse. And so just keep that in mind. So I sorted it by IQ score, and you can see that our top five are right here. For this product, because the search volumes are pretty low for all of them, we'll probably start out by going after every single one of these search terms as long as they apply to our product. 
So what we do is we'll actually start out by going after just the exact match type for this keyword, and then we'll go after broad after that. And so I'm gonna get into some best practices here in just a little bit. So let me switch back over to my slide deck. So let's go over some best practices. Now, before you begin Amazon PPC, make sure that you have multiple ratings and reviews of 4.3 or higher. Also make sure your listing is optimized with great photos, titles, bullets, and A plus content. Once your ratings and reviews are in, put a large coupon on your item. This is optional, but it will increase your conversion rate, which will then increase your organic rank. Again, start out with exact match campaigns only, and then if your budget allows it, add some keywords in the broad and upload that negative phrase list that we made. And then again, still, if the budget allows, start your auto campaigns after that and upload that negative list as well. Now, campaign structure is a big controversial topic in the PPC space. I'm a big fan of separating out every single keyword into its own campaign. Single keyword ad campaigns. Not ad groups, ad campaigns. So that's one keyword per campaign per product. So again, worth repeating for clarification, one search term per Amazon PPC campaign. And we're gonna go over this in just a little bit. Now let's go over some troubleshooting. If you're not getting impressions, increase your bid. If you have no sales or a low conversion, Make sure you have ratings and reviews and look at your listing to make sure it's optimized. Again, try putting a coupon on it. Not a coupon code, but a coupon. And I'm talking a big coupon. We start out at 50 to 75%, sometimes even 100%. If you're not getting any clicks, make sure you check your main photo and then your title. Also check to make sure the words you're bidding on are relevant. So what are your action items for this first part? Find five to 10 keywords to target Start exact campaigns for these keywords. And then if you have the budget, also start a broad and an auto, but make sure you upload that phrase negative list right away. 